these first three questions we did not cover. As, as I said, you're not crazy if you've not seen them. You've not seen them. We didn't cover them. What happened is I felt like, you know, I'm just not quite giving them enough money's worth. You guys paid for this class. I thought I need to give you just a little bit. I'm sorry, just joking around. You guys are thinking, Mr. we want less for our money, please. Um, I, I noticed that this, this is actually a required topic. Let's do it. So this is, it's a dumb little thing. There will be one question on the final, though. I felt like I got to be legit. There'll be one question. Okay, so they're asking us, um, what is it, there, there's, there's ways of, uh, there's numbering systems that are different. Again, I don't think this is the most important thing in the world, but here you go. Or, let me start with ordinal. That'll be one you'll readily identify with. Ordinal numbers are numbers with an order to them. So that would be like first, second, third, right? Obviously, there's an, those are ordinal numbers. There, there's an order. Now, there's certain things in life which are ordinal. What, what do we mean? Well, how about, let's look at number one here. The, the sample of spheres, I don't know what, they got balls, a sphere is just a round ball. Balls, round balls, soccer balls, whatever, baseballs, categorized from softest to hardest. If you took a bunch of like softballs, baseballs, soccer balls, volleyballs, and you put them in order, catching the word, from softest to hardest. What's the softest? I mean, maybe a volleyball, followed by a soccer ball, then maybe a softball, then a baseball, I don't know. Anyway, from softest to hardest, if you put them in order, what kind of a system is that? Well, that's an ordinal system. You're ordering them. It's not the most important thing in the world, is it? That's why I skipped it before, because I think it's not really going to affect your life a whole lot. But anyway, I'll quit complaining about the WASP requirement and move on. Um, next one, nationalities of survey respondents. People's nationalities, right? What, what, what are the different, you know, are they Caucasian, Asian? What, what's their nationality? So nationality is nominal. Nominal means name. Nom, I can't, I can't, no, I can't write and spell. There we go. Talk and spell. Nominal means names. Nom, nom comes from the word name. So it means when they're, they're just names. In other words, we're not saying if I list uh, Asian before Caucasian, that's not mean I'm saying Asian's better or Asian's worse. I'm not, I'm not, whereas with the softball, volleyball, I was saying which is softest, which was hardest. There was a definite order to them with the, with the balls, right? A volleyball is softer than a baseball. But when I list out the nationalities, I'm not saying any kind of ordering. I'm just giving the names. Different kind of system, isn't it? So that would be nominal. Okay, last one, ages of survey respondents. Age, now you might think, well, ages is, a, is ordinal. Well, there's more to it than that. It's actually ratio. Ages are a ratio kind of number system. What do I mean ratio? I mean uh, a ratio system is a system in which you could divide them. Ratio, ratio numbers, a ratio numbering system Ratio means like one thing over the other. Like um, you could say somebody's 10 years old and somebody else is five years old. And if you divide that, you'll get two, meaning the 10-year-old's twice as old as the five-year-old, which is, of course, true, isn't it? You can take a ratio of those numbers, and it's meaningful. Does that make sense? Right? A 10-year-old's twice as old as a five-year-old. So if you divide their age numbers, the two you get has meaning. Now, you might think, well, that does not always work. No, not with the softballs and the hardballs, right? If I if, Think about the balls. If I took the four balls back in part number one up here, if I, what were the balls I said? I said the softest would be the um, volleyball. volleyball. The volleyball followed by the soccer ball followed by maybe a softball, you know, like baseball, softball, and then a hardball baseball, right? So which one of those four would you like to head? You know, like in soccer where they head the ball? Yeah, you wouldn't want to head the baseball. What's that called when they head a baseball? <laughs> they call it a bean ball. Have you heard that term in baseball? The bean ball? He's beaning him. He hits him in the head. That's, anyway, that's the term they use. So anyway, yeah, you know, right. Obviously, that's hard ball and volleyball is much softer and on you go. All right. Well, so what? 
Well, there's not a ratio there, right? You can't say, oh, yeah, a soccer ball, you know, uh, baseball over soccer ball is, is twice as hard. Is it twice as hard? Because it's two times. No, there's, there's no real meaning to that, huh? right? We, we, we don't. There's no such thing. There's, the, that system can be ordered, but it can't be ratioed. See what I'm talking about? So there it is. So that, that's, there'll be one question like that. So just put that. You get a full, you get like five sheets of notes. Like one of each? Just put, nice. No, just one total. There'll be like 20, 29 questions. I think there's 29 on the final. Less than this. This thing is like 40. You know, give, over, you know giving you more practice. But um, there's like 29 on the final. One of them will be. No, I'm not into this that much. Just one out of the 29 questions will be something like this. It'll be, are these things an ordinal system, a nominal system? Are they a ratio system? What are they going to be? All right, that's it. That's the only new topic. I promise the rest is stuff we've done before. All right, on we go to, how about number four? So let's look there at number four. Number four is a valuable question. Get this out of here. Hopefully you got that copied down. So number four um, or actually, we could just go to the next screen. Yeah, I should have just done that. Um, so we have construction workers, teachers. These box plots show the salaries for construction workers and for teachers. If a person is making the first quartile for teachers, he is making less than what percentage of construction workers? So let's see. So what's that, zero? Yeah. Okay, so, so tell me your thinking. Anybody that wants to guide me here? How, how, what did you do? Lowest quartile for construction is the second will be the second quartile for teachers, right? So the first one has like no relevance to any pay the construction workers get. Okay, so um, so remember that um, box plots break data into four even groups, right? So in other words, twenty five percent of all construction workers make between twenty five thousand a year and thirty five thousand a year. Twenty five percent of all construction workers make between what is that thirty five and 40,000 a year. Right here is another 25%. It's very narrow. Make between whatever that is, 40 and 40 and a half. And the top 25% of all construction workers make between whatever that is, 40.2 and 42,000 a year. Right? That makes sense? And then for teachers, the bottom 25% of all teachers, those are math teachers, no, I'm just going to make it between 23 and 25,000 a year. The next 25% of all math teachers, or teachers, make between 25 and 35,000 a year. The next 25%, the third quarter, of all math te or teachers make between 35 and 40,000 a year. And the top 25% of all teachers make between 40 and 41,000 a year. I think all those numbers are lower than it's an old problem. But anyway, so is that making sense? So that's what a box plot does. Do you remember that? It breaks. It's like a football game. I always talked about like a football game, basketball game, four quarters. That's what a box plot does. It breaks the data into four sections, four even sections. Now, when I say even, you might think, they're not even. Some are really, what do you mean even? It's the same number of people are in each of those. The width is not the same, but it contains the same number of people. Does that make sense? Right? So I don't know what this study is, like 100 teachers or whatever, but there would be 25 teachers in each category. Even though some of the categories are more narrow, like the top quarter, that would still be 25 teachers make between 40 and 41,000. One-fourth of all the teachers. So same number of teachers, even though the band is narrow there. Making sense? What, what those data... So that's what a box plot represents. So now... <coughs> Does anybody, how about I just ask, what's the answer to this question? And if I hear the right answer, I'll let you tell me what's going on. Do you got it? Uh, actually, uh, give me the percentage. I didn't, didn't try it. Just give me the percentage. I, I want to ask a question. Oh, okay, sure. I think this is minimum for construction teachers. This is minimum for the, I'm sorry, construction teachers, for construction, and minimum for teachers. Yes. So, coming back to the answering the question, see, as we said, none of these is the right answer. But if I look here, there is a zero. So I thought the answer is supposed to be zero percent. Okay, yeah. so, so, so let's just talk about it. So um, if a person is making the first quartile. Of teachers? Four teachers, thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's an important part of the phrase, huh? First quartile for teachers. How much are they making? 23, 25. 
25, right on the money, right? First quartile, so you got to be clear what that word means. First quartile means end of the first quartile. That's what it means. First quartile means 25th percentile. Now, that's another way to put it. You're, you're right here. That's the end of the first quarter. So remember, we call that Q1. Remember the Q1? And this, and this, is, this is the median. And this is Q3 for teachers anyway. Remember that? Remember Q1, Q2, Q3? You could call the median Q2, or you could also call it median. It's the same either way. Right? Remember like a football game? Into the first quarter, into the second quarter, which is also called halftime. Into the third quarter, into the game. Into the fourth quarter. Right? Remember that? It's all coming back. Remember it's back when the weather was hot? Like 100 degrees outside when we were talking about this? It's been a while, huh? Seasons have changed. We don't think of that. Right? It's been, it's been a long way. Let, let me... So, so remember that quartiles? Quartiles are the end. So Q1 is the end of the first quarter. So that's what we've got to be clear on first. If the person is making the first quartile for teachers, they're making 25000 a year. That's where they are. Okay. Is he making less... He's making less than what percentage of construction workers... He's right here, in other words, right? Same line, right? He's right here, right? He's making 25. He's right on this line. He's a teacher, but he's lined up with the what? The bottom of the construction workers. So if you're at the bottom of the construction workers, which is what that teacher at the first quartile mark is, if you're at the bottom of the construction workers, how many construction workers make more than you? Zero. What percentage make more than you? Oh, 100%. 100%. That's the answer. Oh, okay, so question. you look at vice president because it's not... Right? Which is none of the above. Okay. But watch out. It could be 100% on the real exam. The answer to this is 100%, which is not there, so we're going to choose none of the above. Do you see that the answer is 100%? 100% of the construction workers make more. You're the bottom. Right? Does that make sense? Can you explain again? Right? Sure. See, look at this pressure here. He is making less than what percentage of construction workers? He's making less than 100% of them. He's right. All of them are higher than him. Right? He's making less than 100% of the construction workers. So 100% should be the answer, but it's not there. So it's that dastardly, none of the above. Your favorite option. Yeah. We good? And all coming back? This is tricky too. Spiders... On the forest floor. Remember, we had this one. I don't know if you remember. I mean, we, all the rest of them we've had. These are old. These are recycled questions is what they are. So, spiders on the forest floor. So, what, what are we talking about? Well, this means they, they went out to some forest. They grabbed a bunch of spiders off the forest floor. And they measured how wide the spiders are. And some of the, well, some of the spiders, what was the average spider? How wide was the average spider? Seven millimeters. Seven millimeters. Millimeters are tiny. These are all pretty right. tiny spiders. So seven millimeters was the average spider. What was the biggest spider? Twelve, Twelve millimeters. The smallest spider was two millimeters, and they were all everywhere in between. Okay, what are they asking us? Without calculating, no, take note of those words, no calculation needed, no special, we're not going to touch a calculator, don't even need it. This one's all about gut level feel. It's all about feeling it. So what might be the standard deviation for this set. The only way you're going to answer this question is if you feel the standard deviation. No calculations involved. So you're not going to feel it unless you know what it really is. What is standard? If somebody on the street, after you finish this class, said you took one of them college-level introductory statistics courses, what is standard deviation? That's actually a question somebody might not, not quite in those formal tones. But somebody might read somewhere standard deviation. You'll read for sure. It's all over the place. What is it? Somebody said, blah, 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 the standard deviation was 10. What is that? I mean, like, what is it? What does it feel? What's the feel of it? Anybody remember? A little dramatic music for the question there. What is it? So is it Brian, you got how many it? numbers away from the medium? Or the medium? Uh... How many numbers away? You're really close. Um, Add to that the word average. That's oh, it's so the like average the amount away from the middle. Yes. Yes, standard is a fancy word for average. 
average and deviation. What, what is a social deviant? Does that help? What's a social deviant? Out of the normal range. Out of the normal range, right? If somebody's behavior is different than normal, right? There's normal way of acting. When you see somebody that you know on the street, you normally say hi. Or, you know, there's just whatever. I could give a million situations of normal social behavior. If somebody acts really weird, we call them a social deviant. Their behavior deviates. is different than average, huh? Different than average. So that's what we mean here. Deviation is different than average. So average distance from the middle. That's what standard, typical, average deviation means. Average distance from the middle. So in other words, it, with the, all these spiders that we measure, how big is the average spider? Seven. 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 That was the middle, right? But they're not all right in the middle. Some are bigger than the middle. Some are smaller than the middle. Well, how far do they get off the middle? Well, some of them, what's, what's the one that's furthest from the middle? Some of them get all the way up to 12. How much bigger is he than the average? Five. five. He's five above the average. And the smallest one is how much smaller than the average? Five. Five below the average. So the furthest they get off the middle, the furthest they deviate from the middle, is five, huh? Mm -hmm. How far are they from the middle, typically, on average? I don't know. Some, no, no, not, that's not the average. That's the most. So the average has got to be less than five. Two. You tracking with me? Does that make it? We'll get to the answers in a second, but does that feel right? The standard deviation has to be less than five, right? Do you feel that? The average distance from the middle has to be less than five. The, the furthest distance from the middle is five. So the average has got to be less than five, right? right? Like, like the spiders that are right here, they're not five bigger than the middle. They're, they're, they're at eight. They're only one bigger than average. The spiders right here at nine, they're only two bigger than average. These guys at 10, they're only three bigger. These guys at 11, they're only four bigger. These guys over here only at six are only one smaller than average. These guys here at five are only two smaller than average. These guys at four are only three smaller, etc. So we have spiders that are right on the average. Some are one bigger, two bigger, three bigger, four bigger, five bigger. Some are one smaller, two smaller, three smaller, four smaller, five smaller. So how much off of the middle are they on average? Something less than five. What's the only number up there less than five? Two. That's the only one that's even possible. So you don't need to calculate. If you understand standard deviation, that's the only one in the ballgame. Does that make sense? Standard deviation. So I hope, I hope you will leave that class, because uh, this class, that class, this class, um, with that feel. I mean, that's, that's probably more important than hitting all the buttons, you know? You'll read studies with standard deviation. Do you feel it? Do you know what that means? Average Spread. It, tell, it gives you a feel of spread, doesn't it? Average distance from the middle. So, so data, data sets that are spread wider have a bigger standard deviation because stuff is further from the middle. Data sets that are packed in the middle, kind of like this one is, have a smaller standard deviation, like two, you know, because these are all they're close around the middle. All right, next one. The given angle is in... No, huh, that's crazy. That's one that I mixed up my trig test with your guys' test. Ignore these words. They have nothing to do with the problem. There's no angle there. Oh, there's no, yeah, okay. and there, there, that's a trigonometry question. All right, let's get the, what's, what do we really pay attention to, the bottom part? This box plot shows the results of 40 students taking a statistics quiz. Which of the following quiz scores could be the 24th percentile quiz score? Again, no calculation. It's all feel. Lowest score, A. Right? Do you feel a box plot? Main thing you've got to know is the difference between the literal numbers and the percentile numbers. That 24 doesn't mean the other 24. Those are different worlds altogether. So you've got to realize there's two worlds of numbers going on here. So let me ask you this again. Here's a feel thing. If you have a baby, little baby girl, let's suppose, and a newborn baby girl, and you go to the doctor for the first little checkup, they will tell you your baby girl's height and weight percentile. So they say your little baby girl height is at the 7 percentile. Her height is at the 7 percentile. What does that even mean? Good, good, well said. It's a ranking 
of all baby girls and their heights from 0% to 100%. Yeah, it's just a ranking system. They're just taking all the baby girls, the newborn baby girls, and they're just putting their heights on a big chart. And they're saying, look, the average baby girl is, is at the 50 percentile. You know, the tallest baby girl's at the 100. The shortest is at the zero. So if your girl's at the 7%, she's about right there. Meaning what? 7% of, of baby girls are smaller than her. 93% are bigger than her. So that makes it just a ranking system from 0 to 100. That's what percentile mean. It's percentage ranked from 0 to 100. They use it all the time in the real world we live in. Everybody will assume, anybody in a professional setting will assume you know what that means. Percentile is a ranking from 0 to 100. So, okay, so when this says 24th percentile, not 24 straight number, right? Your baby girl might weigh... Uh, four, oh, that's weight. I don't know. How tall are baby girls? I have no idea. Um, yeah, I do weights, huh? How many inches would that be? I, I'm just told, 23 inches. So your baby girl might be 23 inches tall, but, that's, but she's at the 7 percentile. See those two totally different systems? The amount of inches is totally different than the, than the percentage. So... Um, so when they say, find the score that's at the 24th percentile, they want me to find a score that's 24% along the way, meaning this here would be the 0 percentile, and this one's the 100, huh? So if that's the 0, on the 0 percentile scale, you know? So this is percentile here percentile there and it goes from 0 to 100 where where do you think we would about find the 24th percentile right about here that's got to be 24th percentile how do you know because remember box plots break it into 25 25 25 25 so ending at this line is the end of the first 25 percent then the next 25 percent and the next 25 percent and the top 25. Remember a box plot breaks it into four quarters like a football game? So you got to keep those two facts straight. The box plot is breaking into four quarters and percentile is actually asking you a percentage rating. So where's the 24 percent mark? Just below 27. So which number is just below 27? 26 has got to be it. Not making sense? Is it all coming back? Do you like... Um, I'm hoping it's helpful to you to see it a second time. It really helped me in math and science classes. They were really hard for me, and I would kind of struggle along, sort of half get things. But then when they would make me study for the final, I hated it. I wish they wouldn't make me take finals. But those comprehensive finals, having to study everything again, really was helpful to me. I would be like, oh, I get it now. It's not that hard. I, it would make a lot more sense. I'm hoping that happens for you. That's why I became a big believer in finals comprehensive finals in math because it was very helpful to me. Painful, but helpful. All right, number seven. The, um, the mean of a set of data is negative 2.91 and its standard deviation 3.88. Find the z-score for the value 2.80. There's just a formula for this, and um, I'll give you um, the practice final. You might have, if you have the old exam one notes, you might see it. I'm going to give you all those again. Um, I'll pass you out right either today or Thursday. I'll hand out a package. But anyway, you'll see right on there, there's a formula for z-score. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, that says mean. No, no, that's not right. Score. Is this a value? Is that what it says? Value minus mean over standard deviation. I wrote value. Okay, I'll change it to value. Value minus mean over standard deviation. And so what's the mean... Um, What's the value? That's going to be the 2.80. Minus the mean. What's the mean? Minus yeah. Careful, there's double negative there. See how we have double negative? And the standard deviation, 3.88. Yeah, really, they're trying to trick us. See how, so there's a minus sign built right into the formula. Subtract, I mean, the subtraction, you know. And then the, um, what is it, the mean itself also comes out negative. 
Is that good? That mean, you know, that mean is minus 2.91. So then hit the buttons on your calculator. And I'll do that too. May, oh, make sure, it's an easy mistake to make. Make sure, you, you know that double negative. What do you do with double negative? Positive, yeah, you know that. Make sure you hit equals or enter, you know, um, when you finish the top before you divide. That way it'll divide the whole thing instead of just that last number. And I'm getting uh, 1.47. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's not there? No. That is just disturbing, isn't it? Is that okay? Is that coming? Yeah, so it's good that we, especially for the none of the above, that I do the answers for you. You know when you're doing it right. So that's just a formula. That one won't be too bad. You'll just have a formula. Chris, you'll have a million formulas, won't you, over what we've done this semester. Questions on that one? So, number eight. The distance in miles driven in the past week by each of a company's sales representatives are listed below. Find the median distance driven. The median distance driven. Well, again, it's been a while, and I'll give you the uh, final exam notes, but basically you just put that stuff in L1. Put that stuff in L1, and then you hit, um, what do you hit? I think it's stat. And then you go over to calc, I think. Go over to Calc, and then hit Enter. And uh, when you do, it'll say 1 ver. It'll say 1 ver stats. And you want to, well, you can just hit Enter. It'll, it'll assume L1, I think, if you just hit Enter. Yeah, it will. And um, if you do that, then you go down, and you'll see median, I think. Yeah, there it is. It'll just give it to you. Go down till you find median, median. 261. I hope you feel you've gotten your money's worth out of this calculator. Yeah. You've done a lot with it. Is that good there? Okay, let's... Uh,